games group for inviting me out uh, for this event. Um, it's been <laughs> great to get a little bit of uh, springtime because I'm from the Twin Cities. I live in the Twin Cities and just got 14 inches of snow. <laughs> so um, yeah, being outside in the green and everything, it's just really like, I love this time of year because, you know, start to feel alive again and start to feel like anything is possible. So, um, uh, I want to talk about um, how special this moment is right now. Um, we are alive at a very special moment in human history. We're the first generation to fully understand the consequences of climate change and we're the last that can really do anything about it. And that's just the truth. I mean, we are, um, we have, a, we have a big job ahead of us, um, and um, everything that we know um, has sort of led me to believe at least that we've waited too long. Like we ideally could have solved this problem by now, um, and in some ways we're still just getting started. Um, so confronting that fact, confronting that reality, and being okay with that reality in whatever we can um, is really um, important to be able to move ahead and to be able to move forward. So, um, at this point, radical change, I think, is inevitable. Either we will um, sort of rethink society itself and rethink culture and um, imagine a, a different future that works for everyone, or the climate will sort of do that for us. Like, we are, we are locking in every day, we're locking in a very different future than what we, than a very different reality than what we have right now. So um, I really don't think that that almost ever comes across in the way we talk about climate change. That there is a very, um, there's an urgency that's lost, I think, often. So um, when we think about that, um, um, if we think about if we think about that, um, it's it's de it, it, it's it's anxiety producing. It's really hard to handle. Um, you know, like I identify with this person. He was just like, you know, WTF is going on here, guys? Like we are, we are, um, we're we're like plowing headlong, and no one even cares. Like um, that's sort of how I. That's sort of how I feel a lot of days, and it's hard to um, it's hard to process that, and it's hard to talk about that. But um, but um, you know there are many um, fence line communities and native communities, victims of climate disasters, non-human species, for whom um, what we're worried about has already happened, and I think we need to recognize that um, as we process how we feel about what's happening. Um, Alex Steffen, who's a futurist uh, in California, um, calls what we're in right now a steepening problem. Every year we wait, every day we wait, um, the problem gets harder. So these are the paths um, towards, uh, towards locking in 2 degrees C, not even 1.5 degrees C. Um, so we are, we are on that black line um, going up and up every year. Um, almost every year uh, in recent history has been the record uh, amount of carbon emissions in human history. So just last year was the most carbon emissions we've ever uh, uh, released um, in human history, and it's still going up. So um, not only are we not solving the problem, we're actively making it worse. Um, and uh, and the, the uh, the curve to get us back on track is getting steeper and steeper. So that means um, more and more radical action is necessary. Um, right now, um, this was as of I think December, um, we're on pace for 3.2 degrees C uh, by the end of the century. Um, that's the pledges that the countries of the world have, have, um, have talked about. Uh, but the actual policies that are in place is 3.4 degrees C. So we're talking, even even the words that we're saying is not enough. Um, we, uh, in the case of the U.S., 
Um, we just got uh, sort of downgraded uh, in the last year or two uh, to um, critically insufficient, which uh, the cl uh, Climate Action Tracker, which is an independent consortium of, of uh, entities that are sort of um, providing uh, rel uh, uh, um, regular updates on a lot of countries are, are sort of giving us grades as we go. In order for the U.S. to be on path for 1.5 degrees C, we need to have a 70% reduction in U.S. emissions by 2020. So now that's 26, 29 months, 30, something like that, months away. Um, you know, imagine what that would look like in your life. I feel like a lot of us individually could pull off a 70% reduction in emissions. You know, you stop flying, you stop eating meat, you stop. Um, driving uh, an internal combustion car, that would get you most of the way there, um, just those three actions. Uh, but as an entire country, it might be a little bit harder than that. Um, oops. Um, to be a role model to go above 1.5 degrees C, because we know that other countries are not going to pull their weight, we would have to actually start redo removing net carbon from the air um, by 2020. And that's just not going to happen. I mean, it's, just, it's not. So, um, so uh, what do we do? <laughs> um, uh, about five years ago, I, um, I sort of really internalized all of this for the first time and decided that day to give up flying. Um, that was a radical change in my own life. I haven't been 100% uh, able to do that, but I'm trying. Um, I took the train here from the Twin Cities, um, and this was a picture I took um, of the sunrise and the Cascades on the way here. Um, it, it's helped me in the last five years to see the world in a new way, um, to see it as in a slower, more local way. And I think for me, actually, it's been really helpful um, to, um, to enact a radical change and then live by it and see how that affects me. Um, Obviously, there are, react there are, uh, there are, there's re reluctance to this radical change. Um, the Fox News called me names um, right after this first happened. Um, but you know, <laughs> they find they found the worst possible picture of me on the internet and put it on national TV. Um, but um, but like the end of the day, um, this is our world, you know, these, this is the situation that we live in. We have to work with everyone. Everyone has to be on board at some level or else there's going to be like crazy stuff or <laughs> it's going to, it's going to get sort of, you know, violent for any other sense of the word. Um, if we start trying to force people to do things against their will. Um, that's also not possible. So we have to figure out how do we get everyone on board because we need everyone. Um, I'm not giving up on this. Um, this is these are two reasons why I'm not um, giving up. Um, and for me, um, it is um, it's something that I have started to try to. Um, think about how I can help other people see the world sort of how I do or see the world how they do in a, in a different way, in a more um, inclusive whole way. Um, for me, the way I started to see the world first started in 1990 was some earth. Um, it's when I first realized how inter interconnected the world actually is, that we all depend on each other. Um, the subtitle for that game was The Living Planet. And, you know, there was a 300-page manual that went with it that was, um, that was uh, talking about um, Gaia theory, which was um, James Lovelock's theory that the Earth itself is a living organism that's self-regulating and that will, um, that will act to, to preserve itself by whatever means necessary. So, um, I feel like we're sort of there, um, and um, and what I think that should happen now is a new sim earth for our generation. So this is a picture of the game jam that we had in this room um, this weekend. 
Um, it was just amazing to see pure creativity for 48 hours, people working together on a common goal of, of finding a way to uh, communicate what's happening with the world in ways that are, um, that are, that are fresh and new and interactive and immersive. Um, for me, I think of this project as, uh, as a journalism, as a storytelling tool. Um, I'm a journalist. I feel like telling, telling stories is the only way that, um, that you can really feel, um, or a, a major way where you can feel empathy, where you can see what another person is feeling, because you're, you're, you're reading it, you're experiencing it, you're experiencing what they, um, what they are, what they are thinking and feeling, and people that um, you don't have to meet people face to face in order to know what they're going through. Um, so you know what would happen if we play through the next hundred years a million times in um, in a simulation that is distributed, that's open source, that we can all contribute to, we can all learn from. Because um, at the end of the day, we only get one shot in the real world to do it the right way or to do it in a way that preserves, um, preserves the, the, the planet for, um, for as many people as possible and as many non-human species as possible. So um, the other day, um, I put up a, a tweet that um, what, uh, asking people what action do you think is absolutely necessary in order to get us back on track and um, I just wanted to read a few of the responses uh, because because this is what this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the role of video games or the role of immersive experiences. We can we can um, we can think about the world that should exist, and we can see how people react to it. Like what like what do you think about uh, what do you think should happen, and how do we and how do we get there? Um, so there's about 10 things that people, um, that people wrote back. Um, we should be transferring power to people who have been systematically erased and silenced. Uh, re rewilding and reclaiming of nature, adoption of nuclear power, nationalize all fossil fuel industry corporations, ban Bitcoin mining, radically reshape agricultural production, ban cars, ride your bike, build batteries instead of bombs, uh, electoral reform, including the elimination of borders, complete decolonization, uh, absolute destruction of growth-based economics, a radical effort to reconnect people and engage in discussion of the future, what we love, what we value, and global acceptance. So we can do all of this in a game. Um, actually, the only way I think that we can access the creativity and the time that we have left uh, make radical change happen and imagine a better world that's centered on justice and, and equality is by talking about it, by making art, by playing games, um, that we need each other to, uh, to create the world that we need and we have to do it together. So that's my call to action. <laughs> <laughs>